warming up here. Alright, we're just warming up here, getting ready for uh, 1 o'clock here, but we got a couple cars laid out. Uh, brought some stuff down from a uh, little storage area, so we're just kind of waiting for people to join, uh, you know, before we kind of get started. But uh, essentially, we're just going to talk about all the uh, four wheel drive cars we have out here. And, uh, you know, just kind of, it's kind of been the popular thing here the last couple weeks is uh, Associated going to release the uh, V64. And, um, you know, they did a nice video kind of taking us, uh, taking us back and their involvement in four-wheel drive off-road, which really people kind of forget about sometimes. But, uh, you know, when guys went to all these world championships back in the day to race two-wheel drive, well, uh, you know, mm -hmm. somebody had to, uh, you know, somebody had to really be there, uh, you know, to support these guys. So Associated would, you know, fly their drivers in and, race two-wheel drive, but they also race four-wheel drive. So Associated kind of went through that, uh, through that, uh, I guess that scene uh, with everybody and kind of explained that they were very uh, instrumental in being involved in four-wheel drive. So anyway, we got, uh, brought the BJ4 World Edition, which we, we mentioned was uh, one of my favorite uh, cars. We'll move my phone around. Uh, you know, one of my favorite cars, obviously, in our vintage collection and this is this is the car that I actually raced at the two south two thousand seven worlds in uh, Japan. So this is a car that I brought out there to race. Uh, kind of simultaneously, uh, we transitioned to the B forty four car, and um, you know, so it's it's been a it's been a long process uh, coming along the line with all these different all the different cars that we have here. But uh, the B forty four in general. Uh, you know we're trying we're trying with the volume here, and everyone wants to uh, get the volume as good as possible. But uh, you know we're working on that. We got the B44 here, along with the BJ4. So you know we kind of want to walk through what this looked like when we raced back then. So this is my car from 2007. Uh, at that race in Japan, we actually raced this car with brushed motors and uh, you know regular nickel metal high drive batteries and shortly thereafter I transitioned to the the brushless motors and batteries so that's kind of what this uh, this car kind of reflects is that era when we transitioned from uh, you know from the brushed motor days to uh, brushless so this is the LRP system that we first started running which I believe was called the Sphere uh, speed control, and then I believe they made a spear competition and other ones like that. But you know, at this time, I was running a 7.5 motor, you know, spear speed control, and this was kind of the uh, the latest greatest at the time, 2007. Uh, you can see I took and uh, I took and modified the the battery trays here because at the time we just went to lipo batteries, and you know this car was originally designed to use you know the normal round type cells so we had these battery cradles made here but uh, at that time we went went to lipo batteries and so we did some dremeling here or i did i guess and dropped in the lipo and then we used the old uh the old dean's connector at that time so uh, we cleaned things up a little bit uh since those days but you know we did it as clean as we could at that time uh, don't have the servo or the receiver in here at the time, but we do have the uh, the old big personal transponder. So we got the the spoke Rulux wheels with the double D's. You can see the last time I ran this thing, we ran it pretty hard, wore out the fronts here pretty well. And we talked about you know last couple of Thursdays or so we've been talking about the Rulux wheels. It's kind of a love-hate uh, relationship with that particular wheel. You know, some people love it, some people hate them. Uh, but it definitely, at the time, it was good for us because people, it was recognizable one way or another. People could say, hey, you know, uh, at least they were the J-Concepts wheels. They knew which ones they were. And uh, we had, they had a nice little run for us. So 
Uh, we still sell some wheels that are called uh, the Rulux wheels, and uh, they still do pretty well. So, you know, kind of going the, the car equip. Obviously, we talked earlier, we did a little practice video. Uh, guys are commenting on the tiny shocks, but this is what we ran uh, 2007 and before. Uh, you know, they look small uh, to these days, but, uh, you know, it just looks good um, on this car back then. I have my white ball cups on here, which was something that we were selling at the time. Uh, we had our own ball cups. We sold in white, uh, yellow, and black. You can see here, we turn the car around. We have this uh, low-profile rear ball cup that was actually pretty durable and popular at that time. We used on the, the BJ4, we used... Uh, the genuine CVDs from MIP. Uh, we worked with them and they made these uh, CVDs for us. We have uh, the ones that were just uh, black oxide coated that we used in the kit and then we had the aftermarket uh, chrome shiny CVDs. You can see here we got the, the diff in the front. Got the CVDs working. One thing we were commenting on earlier was this car had aluminum front caster blocks which was pretty neat. At that time, we actually used a low C double X4 front steering block, and then we made our own caster block to fit. Flipped the car up. You know, it's had a had a chassis tape on here before, but I took it off. But you can see, you know, we had the motor as low as we could get, we had the batteries as low as we could get. So it was just a nice, pretty clean install center slipper as we made it for the Worlds in 2005. So uh, then we got the kit box here. This is actually something I keep in my office. This is the actual uh, this is the actual kit how we sold it. Uh, of course we got these boxes just plain white. We got our stickers printed. Got a little factory seal here. How we did it back then. Uh, these were all photos that we either took ourselves back then or uh, got from one of the magazines. Uh, this particular shot on the front, I took this uh, photo of my car in uh, Ocala, Florida on their old uh, outdoor track. You can see how nice the surface was. Everyone can say how great it is to see the dirt. Everyone loves to see dirt uh, with the off-road cars and this was my car. We shot it body off you can see here it actually had a brush motor in it on the box because this was probably straight off of the Worlds so it had the brush motor on it probably the same transponder side of the box we had a photo here from I believe it was Extreme Magazine yep I think Derek Bono one of the guys shot this photo of Mayfield on the pole position uh, from the Worlds in 2005 so that turned out pretty well, and this is a Cavalry win in the race. We sh I think I shot this photo myself with the World's Trophy and the uh, his bottle of champagne or whatever they give you for winning the Worlds. I don't know. I've never had one. So that's that's actually, and this isn't a, this is a real kit here. This has a full car in it. If everybody wants to buy this. It's for sitting up. A couple more goodies we brought out here. I just kind of went through the vintage relics here. Because obviously we talked earlier about how we transitioned to the B44 car, which was one of the big improvements was this car had a different style of center slipper. So digging out of all the old parts here, you can see a prototype of the center slipper, how we use it. So I'll move this car out of the way. We'll bring in the... Uh, which I believe this is actually the point one, not the 44. But you can see here, this is the production version of the center slipper, but this is what it looked like first. Uh, this is uh, actually some parts machine from Associated as we were beginning the transition from our car to a Team Associated car. Uh, they started working on helping machine some components here. You can see this thing's pretty beat up now, but uh, this was you know, somebody there associated, Curtis, or somebody made this uh, little lock, this little nut that we use for adjustment. 
We stick, you know, came up with the concept of sticking the wrench in there and turning the wheels to change the slipper. These were the adapters. So that was really part of probably one of the main things that transformed this our BJ4 World Edition to the B44 was the fact that it had this uh, this slipper in it, which I believe this is uh, that was one of the the big improvements. Obviously, the molded parts being uh, less expensive, um, the whole car together, but this was a, one of the big changes, and I don't know if somebody sent this back to me, or I took it out of a car, or I don't remember if I stole it back from somebody. Here's a diff here. We used to make a lot of diffs back then, and have them ready to go. Here's the bones that went with this piece at that time. You can see that associated, we had worked on this, and we brazed these pieces together here so we actually this was something they used to do back in the, the old days to make prototype drive shafts is they'd sleep they'd sleeve it sleeve a drive shaft and uh, and put them together here you can see this one has a pretty serious sleeve on it but this is how how it was done before everybody just made everything uh, so you can see if you put this in the car you know here's our set up here. This is the input shaft. Comes out of the transmission. So yeah, it's kind of cool. We have these little parts laying around. Everything looks a little rough, a little bit beat, but this is how it was done at that time for doing some testing. I'll throw these back in here. We've got more little fun parts. Kurt Winger sent this back to me one day. You can say this is a, this is a piece of history. From the 05 worlds he said all kinds of so like we said we used to Mayfield and Cavalier used to go through a lot of diffs back then so we used to pre-build all these things and have them ready to go for them in case they needed extra diffs during the race we just pop them in so we'll kind of move out of that put every put this stuff away Something we had upstairs was what the original chassis looked like. This was the first version of the car with the chassis all on one side, or the battery all on one side. So he set this up where you had to actually file these with a file when you built it and everything. And um, you know now that might not even be acceptable. People might not, the new people might not know how to file and prepare carbon fiber, but it was something back then that was easy to do. Uh, we thought so. That's how we car. In case you want to buy one of those, we have it uh, packaged here from uh, 2004, $55 on our original header card. And back then we were Roar National Champion, courtesy of Rob Rippey, went in that first race. So we'll move this guy out of the way. This is just four-wheel drive heaven here. One way I thought people would be kind of interested how we were packaging the cars back then, so we had this bought these boxes. This is bag D for the World's Edition. And what we'd do is we'd label all these compartments of each part that was in the bags. So, um, you know, this was bag D for the World's Edition. We had steering bushings, screws, spacers, you know, antenna mounts, front shock tower mounts went to the top deck. This was the rear mini bulkhead that was in the rear. So we would just go through and, you know, for every uh, bag, we just add the, the part that we needed and we put it all in one bag and seal it and, and that was it. So uh, we had tons of these little boxes and digging in these things and your hands get all scraped up from the edges, but you know, that's how, that's how we did it uh, in, those, in those days. So we move our little... our little car out of the way here but yeah this was the car that probably probably everyone was probably most in love with uh probably in this line was the 44.1 that was ready for the lipos uh it's a great car this is probably my favorite one as well and we'll move that out of the way then we moved in now this is the point three so this is my personal point three car so you can see the Kind of moving along here. I got my phone going. Let's 
get everything out of the way. You know, so here's kind of the, you know, in a sense, there was another car in between here, but, uh, you know, so we go B4, BJ4 World Edition, B44.1. Uh, there was a point two where they made the car a little longer, but we'll just go straight to the point three, And you can see that, uh, you know, this thing's ready to go. Plug in the antenna, charge the battery, and this thing's ready to rock. Uh, but, you know, you can see the same uh, basic car throughout all these years. Uh, it's been about 10 years now that the cars worked so well. And, uh, you know, really happy to be a part of this uh, project with Brad Ralphs and Team Associated uh, in those later years. And... Um, they all work so well for us. Need to put electrical back in this guy. But you know, going to the point, the point three here, which is kind of the big changes that came with this car, where they, you know, lengthened the the chassis, uh, got the aluminum for the chassis, went to three gear diffs all the way around. A little bit different layout, specifically for shorties. And this model, as all the team guys were kind of doing later on, is adding the V5 ball cups to it. Made it a little more durable. Of course, then this car had the big bore shocks by then, which looks so standard now. We got a question here from Matt Moser. He's asking what does BJ stand for? Well, it stands for Brad and Jason. Brad Ralphs and Jason. Four means four wheel drive. So, um, got a guy here, uh, he loved the old body, which uh, this was uh, one of my designs here for the world in Italy. I liked it at the time. Kind of the transition you can see here from sort of the, the mid cab setup, then we went to the finisher style, and then we went to the silencer style. Everybody probably has their favorite. I always like the most recent one. Uh, the old ones always look cool to me, and the most recent ones always look the best to me. But um, so uh, going back through, uh, you know, kind of our comments here. Guys asking uh, what's for lunch. Don't know yet. Uh, got Gotti Jr. We got everybody in here. I thought he was supposed to be at the dentist. If you ever want to be trolled, be trolled by Gotti Jr. He's the best in the business. So, uh, three cars here. We brought out some vintage stuff. Kind of showed you what it was packed like at the World's Edition. Uh, got to talk about the Rulux wheels. We got some old packaged items. We talked about, uh, we got some prototype items uh, built by us and associated. Uh, we got some pieces of history from Kurt Winger that he sent back to me that was out of his car. And uh, so it's kind of a fun little uh, dip into the history here of this car. Uh, I think probably the uh, best memory that I have of this car in the racing was probably with Cavallari and Mayfield uh, racing for the win there in Italy. Um, I thought for sure uh, with Mayfield TQ and I thought that it was going to be a really difficult race. I believe Masami was in between those guys in the race itself. At the time, and Masami, even in 2005, you kind of thought that he was the unbeatable force uh, in RC off-road, especially in four-wheel drive. And I remember, you know, thinking that later on that we beat him in a four-wheel drive class was pretty amazing because he was untouchable for so many years in that class. But Cavalieri getting the job done, and him and Mayfield going side by side, where you know, you kind of, for me, it was like, hey, we had two guys that were on the same team fighting it out for the win, and but they uh, do not race like that they race all out and I remember them going over a triple jump almost tight touching tires and thinking man just let somebody win already let's get this over with and uh but it wasn't like that and uh the guys battled hard and Cavalieri won two mains and I believe in the third main probably the only uh, real regret we had of that race in general was I remember thinking before the last main we talked to Mayfield and said hey you know you can finish second here in this main and, and uh you know it should be an easy an easy deal and we were looking at his diff and thinking all right is his diff okay you know is his gears okay and and uh he's like ah i think it'll be fine and uh, he runs the third main i think he's in the lead or he's in first or second and actually had a situation where 
Uh, he stripped a rear gear, I believe, in the third main, so he ended up getting third overall instead of second, which uh, I was kind of pissed off Brad. He wanted the first and the second. I was happy with the win and the TQ, but later on thinking, it's like, yeah, it'd be nice to get another second, go one, two. Uh, but, you know, I think um, overall, you can't really uh, knock the results, and uh, Mayfield was obviously in a position to, I think he was going to win that main, or he was going to finish second. Whatever he needed to finish second, that's the position he was in. I believe uh, Neil Craig kind of came in there and, and uh, got second instead, which was, uh, he won two wheels, so he was another fast guy that weekend. So yeah, probably should have used one of these diffs here that we have uh, ready to go, but uh, you know, he didn't need it, he didn't think he needed it at the time, and we went with it. And uh, But that was probably the, you know, the only regret from that weekend, it was a great time. And uh, you know, really, uh, really proud of this lineup and kind of getting ready for the B64, kind of start a, um, I've kind of retired running this car myself, so I'm interested to get the new car out there and get some new J concept stuff on it, and I'm uh, really happy to uh, be a part of it. So thanks for joining us here on this vintage chat. Uh, we just kind of did this on a whim today, brought all this stuff out in the last couple minutes and just kind of threw it together, but uh, we'll be doing more of these in the future and talking about you know current stuff, vintage stuff, monster truck stuff, whatever you're interested in, and uh, really appreciate everybody staying tuned, and uh, thanks for being here on J Concepts.